The House of Bob is made possible in part by Legend 7 Brewing and by support from listeners like you. To pledge your support, visit patreon.com slash the House of Bob. Last time on the House of Annihilation, the party circumvents the structure of the Tomb of the Nine Gods with help from a new spell, combats robotic denizens from another plane of existence, and discovers an orrery of Faerun with its surrounding cosmic neighbors. Hello, I'm Jake, and I'm playing as Crate, a doomsaying disciple of Dendar the Night Servant. I'm Dan, I'll be playing Liani, Liana Servana, the Elf Beast Master, with my little buddy Hamlet. I'm Christina, and I play Douglas, the now harrowed Ganassi wizard who is looking to save his family's legacy. My name's Trevor, and I'll be playing Moore, the dragonborn warlock who has been trapped in the Tomb of Annihilation. And I'm Sean, your dungeon master. Thanks for joining us, and roll on! We're just going to put this out there, and, and Alex, you can leave this in on the edit, but I am really nervous about <laughs> oh, good. today's scene. <laughs> The four of you and Hamlet find yourselves in this large room. In the center of the room is this huge globe with a swirling mechanical orrery, like a mobile or a, I don't know. Does anybody know any other names for an orrery other than than that? An astrolabe. Oh, yeah. A big swirling astrolabe. It's kind of like in Skyrim when you have to move all those rings around in order to get it to show the next part of the puzzle just get that little arrow to point at the other thing that you need to go towards so it's like that in completely <laughs> yeah it's exactly like that they just except there's actual like floating orbs though right uh yeah 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 it's all it mechan- just one it's, orb it, it's it, there's one orb in the center that's that and that represents the planet that you're on that's Toro. and then the rest of these orbs are moons and and stars and multiple planets that you'd be able to see if you were out you know doing just your astrology that stuff more blew up that moon <laughs> oh right <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting there. I am getting there. Sorry, I just remembered. <laughs> Moore takes his place in the control chair that's in the center of the planet Toril. This comfy looking chair with some mechanisms around it, some levers, some dials, some buttons. And he reaches out to count the multitude of knobs, levers, and wheels that array themselves before him. As he sits down in the chair, the aperture of the Toril sphere closes and then becomes transparent from his view. So through this filmy gray glass, he can see Douglas, Lee, Hamlet, and Crate watching quite nervously, but they can't see him. He reaches out and touches this silver lever, pulling it towards him. And the rings of the orb creep to life, rotating and spinning, bringing a small golden orb down to alignment in front of him. He turns a small wheel, one that reminds him of the helm on the High Havoc with white spokes attached to a black wheel. He feels the hydraulics groan and a great bronze sphere, obviously representing Saloon, Toril's moon, begins to move. And then it shudders. And a crack runs from the peak to the base of the orb. And then suddenly, the sphere explodes in a rain of shards and shrapnel. Ceramic dust rains down around the room. From within the sphere bursts a slavering and hulking figure, eight feet tall, bright green, and with leathery orange wings unfurling to cast a grim shadow by Douglas's feeble candlelight. In two of its four hands, the creature grasps a massive, double-headed great axe glinting madly with a viciously sharp blade. Echoing through the chamber, you hear its terrible and grating voice speak and laugh in a language most of you don't understand. Off with their heads. <laughs> Roll initiative. 25 for Lee. I got an 8. Great with an 8. Douglas with a... 2. I'm just standing there judging you guys. <laughs> <laughs> More you're rolling 2, even though you're in the sphere. I rolled a 20. Okay. All right, so this creature flapping its wings, kind of hovering in the middle of the room right now, menacing you all with his axe. Looks like it's about to take some action on you. Lee, you rolled 25 for your initiative, and you are the quickest to react. What happens as you see these shards of the moon splashing around the room, this green creature lumbering, floating in the air above you? First off, is anyone still injured? Just a little. I could use a healing. You're not visible. Screw you, you're in an orb. <laughs> I don't care about you. You did this. I can't see you anymore, therefore you're dead to me. 
I was just considering putting down my healing spirit. I could use it, but I think save it for a little bit longer. Can I make some sort of perception, see if he's like weak to anything? You could make a knowledge arcana. Fifteen. You are not sure, but this has all the earmarks of some sort of demonic or fiendish creature. Okay. That's about the extent of your knowledge. All right, I'm going to attempt a shot and attach an ensnaring strike to it. Okay. 22 to hit. 22 does hit. Cool. He's going to make a strength saving throw. 15. Okay. Uh, Success. Always. Yeah, sorry. Not entangled. He'll take 10 damage. Okay. That first shot. And then I will shoot again. 25 to hit. That hits. With 12 damage that time. Okay. I'm trying to picture how we're set up. Where is everybody in relation to him? I'm visualizing him about 20 feet up in the air next to the top of the big orb that Moore is inside. You guys are up against one wall. Because things are spinning. And, yeah. and things are spinning, and it's kind of a tight room to begin with. It's about 20 feet on a side. So not a whole ton of room to move, not a whole ton of room to maneuver, considering the fact that you'd get whacked by one of these bars as it moves around. Okay, I'm just going to send a little hammy mm-hmm. flanking like along the left side then. Okay, so just Hamlet... separating ourselves. Lee whips out her bow, shoots a couple of arrows at this creature. Both of them connect... Hamlet runs around the side of the room to flank, and more. you are seeing all of this happening through this transparent glass of a sphere. Whoa, man. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not out there. <laughs> <laughs> you think he'd be, like, afraid of, like, enclosed spaces. I mean, when we saw this happen, we were literally like, well, he's going from one trap to another. <laughs> I <guess."> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm actually in exactly the same spot that I was before behind glass that I can see out and they can't see in. Yep. But the difference being that I have a control panel in front of me. I pulled some of the levers, twisted some of the knobs, seen the arms behave in a certain way. Sure. I'm wondering if maybe I could try and hopefully move some more levers to try and see if I can't get some of those knobs to swing at this big green monster. Roll me a D8. So I'm assuming that here that you're just moving levers, trying to get stuff to go the way you want it to. Yep. This is to see if you get kind of the right For sure. action happening. I got a five. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you make an attack roll Sweet. with a plus five. Oh, nice. You hit him with the sun. <laughs> 14 to attack. He manages to just duck out of the way as one of the bars comes swinging past him. Shit. It is the creature's turn. And... To all of your surprise, from the second set of arms that's not holding the axe, some arcane symbols are produced. He begins to move his fingers around, and suddenly there are four of him. Horse feathers. Uh. They are shifting and, and moving and trading spaces and attempting to distract you guys. And then he flies straight down at Douglas. All Did four of them are separate? All Just four of them come together and plant themselves on the ground just beside Douglas. Hi. <laughs> Do your blur thing. Well, it has to be my turn first. <laughs> Can't wait to meet you. <laughs> Hi. Great, it's your turn. Like M-E-A-T? <laughs> <laughs> Ver- verbal puns like that are much harder to get by. <laughs> oh, boy. Gee whiz. Um, <laughs> Holy smoke. <laughs> For heaven's sake. Gee golly. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh mackerel. <laughs> All right. Uh, wow, you guys have great, uh, <laughs> great crate impressions all around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the slimy Fargo. coils of Dendar. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try to. I don't like the idea of this mirror image, so I'm going to try to cast a spell magic. Okay. You cast a spell magic. The mirror images, those three extra versions of him, disappear, popping out of existence. He looks to his left and right, sees that they're gone, and shifts his gaze from Douglas to you. Hooray! (laughs) I did it! Thank you! (laughs) You killed my friends! (laughs) And I don't have any good options for a minor action right now, so I will just get ready to get murdered. (laughs) All right, Douglas. Oh, actually, I'll do an arcana check? Sure, go ahead. Never mind. You can tell the language that he's speaking is abyssal. I do speak that. 
you do speak it, you're able to get full definitions of all his great puns. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> get it? Get it? Uh, that, that's why he didn't attack. He was pausing for applause. Yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and actually why he attacks me is because I just stared at him, like, not understanding. <laughs> Come on, at least I chuckled. Yeah. Right. crowd. All right, so, Douglas, it is your go. What's our situation in terms of where we are to each other? I would say that you guys are all within 10 feet of each other. Mm-hmm. So we're spaced out, though. You're spaced out a little bit, yeah. Okay, I am going to cast Blur on myself. Okay. He's right. He's still right in front of me, or now he's turned, I guess? He has looked over at Crate. You got, the sense, still in front you got of me. the sense that he really wants to cut Crate up, but he's still <laughs> right beside you. He wants to cut him up with his good jokes. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think I'll just I'll wait for him to maybe decide to move. You're, you're going to ready an action? or? Well, no, I use my action to oh, cast, sorry, blur, cast Blur, but right. if, he, if he moves, I do have the ability to do a spell. Uh, Sounds good. Yeah, opportunity attack. Okay, Lee. I almost want to try the Instaring Strike again. I think pinning him down would be a huge boost to us. I'll try to hit him again with it. Okay. So I'm just going to use my arrows again, or my bow. Yeah. And fire off a couple. First one's going to be a 12. That misses. And then 22. 22 does hit. Okay. 11 damage, and he has to make a strength saving throw of 15. Success. Do you get advantage on that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm rolling dice. You, Peeker. <laughs> I can't see the numbers, but... <laughs> I wasted a natural 20 on that. Good. Yeah, you're welcome. I mean, not really. I always so, have one spell. So. No, you're welcome. <laughs> so Lee's still trying to pin the fiend down, shooting arrows from across the field of battle. It is now Moore's turn. Moore, still interested in understanding these dials and knobs. Yeah. Having the intention of pulling more to sort of pull a uh, three stooges. Yeah. And maybe getting two of the arms to spin back and forth and sort of chop sure. at this green monster. Okay. Right now it's right beside Douglas, so it's not within the range of those, but you could try and make other effects happen, potentially. Sure, so just good hit buttons, idea, whatever. But no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe focusing more attention on um, what knobs and dials, perhaps buttons or clickers or whatever doohicks are okay. in this weird contraption I'm in to potentially reveal movement out of the planets themselves as opposed okay. to their just their position. So you're trying to learn about the, how this mechanism works a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and roll me a D8. You're going to, like, literally fuck up the solar system. I hope you know this. <laughs> I've been stuck in a mirror for 30 Everybody's, years. Everybody is outside in Port 9's R looking up at the sky like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I rolled a seven. A seven. Okay, you are beginning to figure out exactly which levers are connected to what. And you notice that at some points when a ring kind of settles to a horizontal position in front of you, it kind of does a click and, and pauses for a second before continuing on. Hmm maximum ascent or descent or some point of click <laughs> point of click that's the point of click <laughs> all right it is the creature's turn again and with a bit of a, a chuckle at douglas's blur and at the ensnaring strikes that lee has been throwing down at him this creature pops out of existence and reappears directly beside crate oh my god damn it let me he swings, great axe you a question. Swings with great axe. <laughs> <laughs> that was my line. <laughs> 21 to hit. Sure. This is going to be a painful episode, not just in hit points. <laughs> we have so many great episode titles to pick from. Yeah. That's the important part. You're looking at 17 slashing damage. All right. And it is Crate's turn toe-to-toe with this large beast of a man, creature, demon thing. All right. (laughs) Fine. (laughs) We will return in kind, and we're going to reach out with a hand of necrotic energy and inflict wounds. Oh! Oh! That's 20! It's the same die that rolled three twenties last week. Oh, oh dang! Oh, I gotta Whoa. confiscate that thing. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I, I put it separately aside in a special spot in my backpack. Oh. Um, so how does that work on a spell? Is it? Yeah, uh, crits can happen on a spell if it's an attack roll. Okay. 
So 8d10 damage then. Beautiful. You can tell how little he crit before. <laughs> <laughs> this, this has never happened before. Happen? <laughs> can this happen? <laughs> Sixty-two plus. Good. I'm going to use my channel divinity to add more to that. Touch of death for an extra twenty-one damage. Oh my! So you're doing eighty-three points of damage. Get fucked! <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even a pun. <laughs> oh, I forgot we were doing puns. <laughs> You reach out with your necrotic touch, grab one of this creature's wrists, and you just see this necrotic surge of rot and torment blast through his body. He shakes and he goes down to a knee as you manage to do a huge amount of damage. <laughs> That's the most damage I've done this entire campaign combined, I think. <laughs> Bravo. But uh, he I'm is, freaked out. <laughs> he is in pain, that's for sure. And it's Douglas, you see this creature down on one knee in front of Crate, about to bring his axe up to decapitate your friend. Oh, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> it is your turn. Sorry, your friend. I mean, the guy you've been traveling with. <laughs> guy I'm trying to understand anyway. I'm going to do a frostbite on him. Okay. Hopefully before he do he do that. It's a 16 constitution saving throw on your part. 16 constitution. Yeah. 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 An 11. Oh. Uh, so fail. How yeah. much damage? All right. Let's see. Seven. And also, uh, you have a disadvantage on your next weapon attack roll. Nice. Seven points of damage Mm -hmm. and disadvantage on my next attack roll. That's right. Okay, sounds good. Lee, it is your turn. He has just been blasted with necromancy and cold energy. You can tell that that frost, it's not really penetrating down. He appears to have resistance to cold. Okay. Maybe he doesn't have resistance to fire. And then Lee pulls out her flaming sword of whatever. Yep. Doom. <laughs> Flame tongue longsword. Yep. Doom. Yeah. Yeah, that. <laughs> and then uh, rushes in. Okay. Go for it. Yep. George yes. Worm and Flaming Longsword. He's going to do like a sweet <laughs> slide and like slash at his back as he's on his knee. What a bunch nice. of stupid shit's happening tonight. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of it, yeah. Now that's the title of the episode. <laughs> a bunch of stupid shit. <laughs> that's the title of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Missed on the it's first true. swing. And second swing. Oh, probably missed on the second swing. What'd you get? 13. Nope, that does not cut it. Swing and a miss twice. More. It is your turn. You see now the all three of your friends converging on this demonic creature. It's down on its knee. It looks like it's in quite amount of pain. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? So I've seen them. They're all outside of the arms of yes, space. Yes, they're just a little too far away for you to do your whack maneuver. And <laughs> the... So whack. <laughs> the whack, whack maneuver. Whack. Damn. <laughs> really was hoping I was leaning into that whack maneuver. I would also say that you're getting a pretty good idea of what levers control which rings. But you have no idea what it'll do. <laughs> to be fair. But they're, they're still outside of the... Still outside, yeah. Let's, uh, let's draw them in. I'm thinking if I could spin a planet and then snap it off of its like take its <laughs> momentum and spin it around me and then like click it so that the planet flies at okay you know there's the like three arc. of us around him give her a shot <laughs> so <Sweet. laughs> roll, me a, roll me a d8 <laughs> i rolled a one okay you uh, don't roll a one <laughs> you're like this is the one this i've got it you slam down on a lever. One of the rings swings around, and you see it's catching a momentum, but then it hits that horizontal plane and locks in place. Damn it! Oh, you might have figured out a something with the like actual thing, though. I suppose. Understanding the, the universe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or at least the puzzle. <laughs> Sadly, it is the creature's turn again, and it's going to come up with its great axe at Crate's neck. It's got that disadvantage, First though. attack, disadvantage. Yeah. Natural five. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Second attack. Natural one. Wow. Oh. I'll take it. It growls in frustration. Crate, it's your turn. We're going to reach out again with another necrotic blast. Uh, 19 to hit. That hits. Cool. With an arm wreath necrotic energy. 24. 
plus another touch of death for another 21, so 45. You look at this demon on his knees in front of you. You pick up your boot and just kick in his chest. The necrotic explosion (laughs) that blows him back onto the ground disintegrates a huge part of his chest cavity. His axe falls to the ground and turns to dust. It is dead. Oh. Yay. Yay. He didn't even... Good job. I was like, he did like no damage to us. He 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 hit me once for 17. And that's what he gets. Yeah. That's what he gets for touching me, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. His one-liners were better. <laughs> he only had one. <laughs> they were better. We created this character for him. Yeah. <laughs> this demonic creature literally rotting in, in front of your guys' eyes at the result of this necrotic energy that's bursted into him. You've got more still inside the sphere. Uh, <laughs> Don't yeah. touch anything. Okay, too, let's too let's late. make a vote. Leave him and go into the next room. Or I think the doors closed or something. No, no, doors are open. Doors are open still. All right, hands up. <laughs> <laughs> figure out the puzzle, or let's keep going. More takes a quick look at the orientation of the the planets and everything. Yeah, as a pirate who would have likely looked at stars to <laughs> orient himself. <laughs> yeah, you recognize all of the the bodies or the entities that or the satellites that these represent, but they aren't really in a configuration that would help you navigate. It's kind of more that rudimentary child's version of like the sun and the nine planets. You know what I mean? Are they all kind of tied to one another or do they spin individually of one another? They're each on their own ring. Yeah. Right. They all are moving separately according to your control. Okay. And your planet is the center of this universe. Like the sun is orbiting you. About time somebody recognized that. (laughs) I head towards the doorway. Yeah. Uh, more looks like your friends are getting ready to leave. All right, are you well, play with it anymore. Or I, I yell at more and be like, "You do, you, you do, you." We're just going to stand over here. All right, I'm just going to line them all up so they line up as a straight line. Because if movies have told me anything, that's lines are good. How that's they're supposed to line up when all the evil stuff happens. Yeah. Generally, oh. so, or great magics anyway yeah. always happen. Then so you align all of these spheres into conjunction. Mm-hmm. Roll a d100. Oh my god. 96. 96. You see these spheres come into conjunction and all of these lights begin to illuminate amongst all of the spheres and, and even the, the rod that was originally connecting Saloon, the moon that the creature had burst out of. You see a light start to emanate from the end of it and it's all swirling around. Mm-hmm. And then that light concentrates into a beam that shoots into the sphere directly at you. Oh, Whoa. It floods the inside of the, the sphere that you're in, begins to glow within that space, and you can feel this immense power beginning to feed into you. It's like this biofeedback. You're, you're filled with static electricity. Ooh. You begin to have all of these visions and, and flashes and images. You see, you see this dark space. You see a bright space. You see this undead humanoid figure with a spiked crown uh, walking through an infinite space his staff clinking against the ground. You see Omu as it once was resplendent and glorious about to crumble into the ground as slaves begin to disassemble it brick by brick. Roll a d4. Four. Your intelligence goes up by five to a maximum of 22. You're fucking smart now, bro. Yeah. Smart enough to know that wasn't a good idea. I'm worldly. I, don't I know. mean, it was a good idea. <laughs> so what is your current intelligence now? I went from 11 to 16, which is nice. You just graduated with a master's degree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All because I decided like, eh, they'd look better if they were in a line. <laughs> I was so smart. <laughs> I know. I told you great magics always happen when the planets are aligned. <laughs> Not always bad. Sometimes... Yeah, but usually bad. (laughs) (laughs) The only exit from this room is back the way you came. Oh, really? I thought that was another door. Yeah, because I thought we went over to the other side, check out the door. But maybe I was misremembering. Yeah, he knows where the doors are. Mismembering. Maybe it's closed. You mismembered. Dismembering. You you are dismembering. (laughs) I don't know. I I leave. (laughs) I don't think I told you about another door anyways. I I feel like I I remember you specifically told us there was another door. We might do a perception check. Because we were going to either go 
out that other door oh. or do a thing. Okay, so it was the secret door that you guys found. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like I did that find I a forgot, That door. I forgot that I told you about. Yeah, I do remember <laughs> that. You're just going to do that in every room now. You told us that there was a door. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, <Are> shit. <laughs> uh, okay, so yes, there is a secret door on the side of the room. You guys go through this secret door. On the other side, you see that there is a, another small crawlway. It's another one of those kind of cramped little sewer tunnels or air duct tunnels that you've been going through before. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go. After you guys. Check it out. More, get out of that ball. I'm out of the ball. Good. Yeah, as you stand up out of the chair, it just opens. Head all swollen now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I got like an egg head. Yeah. <laughs> like mega mind, it's all. Yeah, it's canon now. <laughs> Except that I got like weird horns that kind of like went <laughs> yeah. up with it as well too. No, they curve back into your skull. Oh, ow. <laughs> the skull grew into the horns? You're yeah. just jealous that you're a goat and I'm super smart. <laughs> <laughs> Those are weird things to be jealous about. Yeah. Except you say like the, also, the scientific name for goat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, also not the smartest thing you could have said. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a maturity thing. <laughs> yeah, that would be a wisdom insight. Uh, yeah, let's check out what's uh, through this crawl space. You move through this crawl space. Eventually, you come to a part of it that has a grate uh, on the ceiling. A a seat, a grate on the ceiling. (laughs) Thanks. (laughs) Uh, It comes to a dead end, and there's a grate on the ceiling. And on the other side, it is dark. There's like a stone something on top of it. Can I just like push it to see how heavy the grate is? Much heavier than you push it with your one finger. More? (laughs) Out of my way. You may be the brains, but I'm the brawn. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. <laughs> I'm the brains. <laughs> All right. I'll make a strength check. Okay. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Lee positions herself underneath it and just tries to do a bench press on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nothing happens. Uh, mm. Do you want to try once more with a D4? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Ooh, much better. That is 28 you begin to push up on it uh, and this time your hand is kind of right in the right position that it hits this little like hidden lever or brick oh, whoops. element of the ceiling and it begins to slide out of the way revealing the control panel room that you guys were in way back a little while ago. Oh the beginning? What the hell? As you open it up uh, a bit of that grayish purple ooze oh. slips down but it's not really enough for it to cause any damage. I don't think we want to be here. No. How, we ended up back. <laughs> Do we end up in a different part of it, though? No, this is like you just moved the the big control altar out of the way, basically. Well, now we have an, uh, we can maybe change some stuff on the controls and then take this pathway out. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why would we want to? We literally, like, basically skipped a whole bunch of stuff by yeah, going above. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, we'll check out back through the uh, Ori room, I guess. Yeah. You make your way back through the orrery room. Now you can see that that demon is almost fully decomposed on the floor, just this puddle of necrotic sludge left behind. <laughs> <laughs> you go back down the hallway through to the chain room where that that vortex on the ceiling and the floor with that moving whipping chain oh, yeah. rotating around. And you're, you guys are about 10 or 15 feet above the platform on the other side of this. You'll have to get back over there. But it looks like because you're on a higher level now, it'd probably be easier to get back. I can't remember how we did it last time. Do we just have a rope that we climbed across? Or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You right. yeah, yeah. spider still climbed there. and then mm-hmm. did some stuff. <laughs> well, I don't think I could have spider climbed. I think more teleported yeah, over and tied yeah. the rope. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, if that's still there, then we, with ease and no need for die rolls, make it across. <laughs> Totes. With, Totes. With Dendar's <laughs> blessing, we cross. <laughs> I don't want his blessing. You guys... Whenever you accept a D4 from me, it's Dendar's blessing. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you should whenever, tell people that. Whenever <laughs> I heal you, a little bit of Dendar is entering into you. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> I, already, I already have a little bit of goat in me. It reminds me of a uh, ziggurat nobody was happy about. So you guys uh, zip line back across the chain room, and you find yourself back in that long hallway where all of Douglas's clothes dissolved. Oh, on the right Sad side. memory for me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember We're all clothes. enjoying the view, though. I had those clothes for a while. <laughs> and on the right side of this hall, about halfway down, there is a set of stairs that descends below. There was always these stairs? Yep. <laughs> well, I think we just chose one way to go. <laughs> yeah, it was not the stairs. <laughs> yeah, let's go down the stairs. All right, you guys move down the stairs. Deeper uh, and deeper. They descend about 25, 30 feet. And you come out into this larger chamber. Green smoke 
billows out of a bronze cauldron in the middle of this vaulted hall. To your left and right, a balcony overlooks the central area with stairs descending on the far side of you to the main level where you're at. Barely visible through the haze are three rocking chairs, several workbenches heaped with haberdashery, a spinning wheel, and beside that, a rusty iron cage containing the shadowy form of a prisoner. Any spare clothes anywhere? Past, <laughs> you could yarn some. Ask that. that takes such a long time. <laughs> Past all that, and just looming through the haze. It's a loom. <laughs> <laughs> Good if one. Only. <laughs> <laughs> Inspiration. Uh, a humongous green stone door. Its surface carved with hundreds of grinning goblin skeletons and skulls. Before you can move any further into the room, three tiny figures waddle out of the smoky haze towards you. One of them is a straw doll with rusty pins sticking out of its body. The second is a faceless lump of clay molded to look like a child. And the third is a stuffed monkey with the lower body of a unicycle. The straw doll waves its arms frantically. He, he needs to run away. The Stone Sisters will be back any moment now. What the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> We're in the, the bad kid from Toy Story's house. <laughs> this is like the land of misfit Sid, toys. Yeah. <laughs> Who are the Stone Hi. Sisters? The, no, the Stone Sisters. So. Sown. Sown. Oh, Sown. Yeah. Sown sister. They're, hey, sister, Sown sister. They're, uh, they're three, <laughs> three terrible women. They're, they're, they're hags. Oh, hey, don't talk about women like that. <laughs> well, it's like a technical term. <laughs> Still, though. <laughs> it's not okay. They're, they're here to... They're here to, to nurse the thing on the other side of the skeleton gate. Like the prisoner chamber there? Uh, no, that's that's the looky like. On the other side, there's this, this, that green door. There's something awful, and they're here to take care of it. Do you guys want to just come with us? Oh, we, that would be great, but we really can't leave unless... We can't, can't just, like, walk out. It just doesn't work like that. Why not? Have we you actually tried? We're bound to this place. Like this room, or like the... That's right. Oh. The, the hags created us. They, they created these bodies. They bound us within them, but uh, we will try as we can. We could not go up the stairs or through any of the doors. What if you were destroyed? Would you cease to exist? I imagine you must... Your existence is painful and you live here. I don't know. All right, well... I don't want to be destroyed, really, but... Okay. It's just, pretty scary here. <laughs> just, just asking, you know? Yeah. We're yeah. just seeing what all the Maybe. options are. Yeah. Where will the Sone sisters come back from? They're on the other side of the door, I think. But sometimes they just appear. Would it be possible to barricade them in the That's door? That's what I was thinking. Well, they just appear, it sounds yeah. like. Oh. <laughs> they teleport, obviously. Mm. Maybe we could just flank the door and then they're ready to, like, obliterate them once they appear. They don't use the door. They... they they just appear. Yeah, they teleport. Well, they appear in their chairs. Sometimes they use the chairs to to rock in and to so. connive and to sow their evil magics. So if something happened to the chairs, would they have a hard time? <laughs> yeah, tell the me about the chairs. Yeah. The, ch- <laughs> the chairs just make them uncomfortable. I think it's really just a comfort thing. <laughs> yeah. All right, I am just uh, weighing my options here. <laughs> All right, what, what about this uh, looky? What do you call him? A looky like? The looky like. What's he? What's his deal? The th- the, hag, the hags m- made him to learn something. I don't know what. So he's, he's he's one of them, essentially. No, he's. They made him. They made him to learn something from. I don't know from what he looks. He likes. What does he look like? Do you guys go over and look? I go over and look. Okay. He looks like you. You oh. And you oh, look like him. Shit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you approach the cage, and within, the prisoner is naked and scrawny. You see two thin wrists, and you can count the poor man's ribs. As he looks up at the sound of your approach, you see a haggard and deformed yet eerily familiar face of Cranston Thorn. His scalp is smooth and shiny. He's missing eyebrows and eyelashes, but you recognize the eyes and the shape of his half-elven lips. He looks out at you with a glimmer of recognition, but no hope in his eyes. Who's this loser? (laughs) I don't know. Cranston. <laughs> <laughs> Was there another way uh, out or around or, of this room? Looking around, you see that on the tops, 
the top of these two balconies, there uh, appear to be five doors. So after being told all these aspects of yeah. these three women yeah, and the space and the door yeah. and walking over and seeing this person, would I be able to roll an insight as to what one would gain from having these uh, yeah. assets? Roll an arcana check. 20 on my arcana. Okay. You know some stuff about night hags. Oh. Sly and subversive night hags want to see the virtuous turn to villainy. They want to see love turned into obsession. They want to see kindness turned to hate. Night hags feed off of the souls of those who have been corrupted. They can form a stronger coven when working together. They are spellcasters and infernal creatures that are able to move between the prime material plane and the ethereal plane with ease. Would I be able to use disguise self to look like a hag? Like, would I know enough about night hags could, to look like you, one? You could suppose, like, to try and look like a hag, but you're not going to be able to look like a specific one. I'd like to look like a hag with my disguise self. Okay, so describe a hag. Short, <laughs> stout, kind of yeah. gray, very thin, slimy looking hair. Yeah. Round, bulbous nose. Punched in, saggy face. Punched in. <laughs> well, it's like compressed. they're asking for yeah. it, yeah. and they're asking for it. <laughs> Portly, kind of like Baba Yaga ish. Yeah, claw like fingers. As you guys surround Cranston, you see Mork looking around, and and he takes the strange form of this Baba Yaga ish looking creature. You can tell that up on top of the balcony, there are five doors leading out of this room. In addition to that big skeleton gate, I want to go up to the cage. And when I see Cranston, I'm going to like kneel down. And basically, I'm like the only one he could actually maybe recognize. Oh, yeah. Really? No well, I look like a goat. Yeah, so, you don't good look point. like yourself. Yeah. I ask him, Cranston, do you know who I am? Yes. Uh, you're, you're Douglas. I remember you from, from before. From before what? Everything was dark for a little while. I remember f fighting in the Colosseum, and then blackness, and, and then I, I woke here. Those terrible creatures, they were asking me questions. So many questions, some I didn't know the answer to, but some of them I had no choice. I had no choice but to tell them about you and about Lee. What did you tell them about me? Oh, yeah, this is Lee now. <sighs> Bet you didn't Lee, tell him this. <laughs> Lee, my friend. <laughs> this dungeon, I'm man. I'm sorry. I think I told them everything that I knew. It's okay, Cranston. What What happened to Horik? Where's Horik? Hmm. He, he's in a better place. <sighs> I have such a hard time believing that. Well, every any place is better than here. I think Cranston... That we want to kill these women. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> How about we get you out of here and do I, something about that? I don't know what help I'll be. I now have the statistics of a commoner. <laughs> <laughs> Can you cast bl bless still, though? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if there's any magic any, left. Any you? wind left in these pipes? Do you want in these sails? Well, I'm a musician. <laughs> no place. We, we found this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he so, looks familiar somehow. I don't know. You look like an interesting and complex character. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I had a really... <laughs> With a sharp wit and uh, <laughs> handsome features. Oh, my God. You're referring a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I once had a, a fantastic backstory that only partially was... Revealed. <laughs> yeah, you only told but me. But I a told the bit. hags all of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> every Lucky. last, every last moment, they've unraveled my mind. Okay. Well, do you? And how can I put this in a nice way? Want to go with us? Stay here or go your own way. Make an insight check. Yeah. Okay. I got. I got a twenty-one. Douglas, you are looking deep into Cranston's hopeless eyes and mm -hmm. you can tell that 
he appears to be broken and and not only that but it's, his body is like fresh it's an adult size but it's like a baby's skin yeah he's new and he's he doesn't have what he once had something is gone from him it's like he's a shell or a a cheap knockoff of cranston cranston yeah based off of your time with these hags them working together how have you noticed their relationship do they seem to cooperate cohesively or does there seem to be tension that could be aggravated between them they they are a terrible trio i got the sense that they were as thick as thieves like Haxale and Dog used to be, like me and Horik used to be. Well, you guys were more like brothers. Do you really think you were like hags working together? They and these hags they, they stick together like shit on the boot heel. I think <laughs> I, I think that is a very apt analogy. <laughs> apt and how, smart for how well these hags work together. Thanks. Damn. My plan was to act like a fourth hag getting into the coven, but <laughs> I, mean, I don't you know if this will work. Try that, but I think they work as a unit. From they probably also wouldn't expect just some random fourth night hag well, to show up. I just want to show up and be like, "You think you're so good? <laughs> <laughs> you call you, want, you call you this start? a hag? Yeah, I heard that Becky said you yeah. looked fat yesterday. <laughs> oh, I thought you were trying to start like a hag turf war. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> Becky the night hag. From behind you guys, you can hear the straw doll pipe up. Uh, your disguise won't work. They already know all about you, more. You've been here for a long time. They've been watching you sleep sometimes. <laughs> they've, Weird. They've seen all of you. Your <laughs> dreams. Oh, are these the reason why we're seeing those weird dreams? It could be, yeah. I think it's this place, but they probably are part of it. Mm. They need to die, for sure. We could not do that and just leave. Leave where? One of these five doors. They, but the thing is, they've been learning about us, so that means that that's for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's probably more advantageous to make sure that that, that that doesn't keep going on. Anyways, Cranston, my friend. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> no more tears now. <laughs> As you like put a pillow over his head. That's basically <laughs> Doing. What? <laughs> oh my god! He said I looked deep into his eyes, and he's a shell of a man. <laughs> that doesn't mean he wants do, you to kill him. Do you that's really a, think that's that's like, literally what I was asking him? But if, <laughs> have we have, like should we at least ask Cranston about the doors <laughs> or like what these hags use the spinning wheel for? Like, I doubt they're making socks with it. I right? know they're not making socks with it. That's okay, magic. Well, Cranston might have seen them use it for practical use so that we could at least know that they have something against us. Maybe we could sabotage Bef this stuff. Def I definitely oh. meant to be telling you that he's not useful in a fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, not in a fight, but yeah, therefore. What, you want, what did you want me to do? That's what I was saying. I, I didn't know of a nice way to put oh, it. Oh, what do you want me to do? Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, I can let you go, you can come with us, would, or you can go to sleep. I would. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the uh, three options I was trying man, to give him. <laughs> brutal. Uh, I, would love, I would love something to eat. Uh, if you could let me out of this cage. Yeah, I could definitely let you out, dude. I don't have anything to eat because, as you can see, all my stuff is gone. <laughs> How much do we trust this looky like Cranston? I feel like I do trust him. Not just because he looks like Cranston, but because he's been tortured for so long. Okay, Moore takes the shape of Moore again because the hag, uh, the hag gig is up. Sure. <laughs> but before we go letting Cranston go, just because I feel like the cage might be magical and they might know that it's open. So they let's know just, we're here. Well, let's continue talking to Cranston in the cage and just ask him, Cranston, the doors up there. Is this, have you seen the hags move in and out of those doors? Do they ever open or are they always closed? Yeah, yes, I've, I've seen them in those doors. Sometimes they, they go up and in and out and always cackling, always laughing, planning and plotting. They, there's something beyond those doors that will unlock the gate. Mm. I'm afraid that. They hold more danger for you, but I think you'll have to go. Do they use these implements like the spinning wheel and the other junk for that, stuff for the doors? I think that those are just set dressing. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, this place came furnished. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Hags get bored. They want to make things. <laughs> well, they, yeah, they probably use it to make the little like, dolls and Stitch stuff, and but... bitch, right? Yeah. 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 They have lots of bitching to do. <laughs> <laughs> they make little crafts to sell on their Etsy store. <laughs> Speaking of Etsy's. <laughs> little uh, dice trays that you too can have made by a hag hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's, o- it's okay to call them a hag <laughs> that's, a- <laughs> that's a technical term it's apparently. a technical term <laughs> okay. okay so I'm going to try to figure out how to open this lock cage you okay. guys can do what you want. Uh, so definitely thieves tools would work. It mm-hmm. doesn't look particularly sturdy. You might be able to just break it. Okay. Before I do that, yeah. I'm do like, an arcana check on it or something. Yeah. See if this shit's that's trapped. What, that's what I was going to say. Okay. So if you want to detect if it's actually magical, it would be a magic check. You could do a, a perception or investigation rather to uh, okay, determine if it's trapped. You also have your detect magic traps and wand. Oh, yeah. I think we've depleted that by going through this place. It's three, you get three like, charges a day. Yeah, you oh, get three okay. charges a day. Well, I'm definitely going to do that. Okay, so you're at the cage. Oh, thank you for uh, remembering that. The wand flips up and points at one of the doors in the balcony. Okay, don't go through that door, guys. <laughs> do we know which one it was? Your southwestish door. Okay, make a note of it. Uh, 14, investigate. Okay, this lock looks sort of flimsy. You think, you know, if you hit it, give it a good hit with a dagger, it would pop open. Okay. You don't see any trap connected to it in any way. I don't feel magic. You'd have to cast a spell to be sure, but uh, you don't think so. Okay, guys, I'm going to hit this lock. If you guys want to do anything like before that, I will give you 30 seconds. (laughs) (laughs) Just just short short rest. (laughs) Short, short, short. Short, short rest. I mean, like if you want to ready an action or something. Just let your friend out. You guys can take short rest for sure. (laughs) <laughs> nice. Actually, yeah. take a short rest. Oh, I sweet. mean, yeah. uh, through what we've done or a short rest going forward? As you've been doing it. Okay. Oh, okay. That's right. fine. oh thank yes. you. Uh, That's good for a warlock. You pop the lock off. Yeah. You open up the cage. You have to help Cranston out and to sit in one of the rocking chairs. And he collapses there weakly. One of you give him a bit of rations and he eats it and drinks some water and just appears so thankful but so weak. Just like in life. <laughs> just throwing it out there, guys. He's not useful in the fight now, but I do know Animate Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you wait till it happens? <laughs> You're going to get some extra mileage out of your old character. Yeah. No matter what. <laughs> there is the skeleton gate on one side. Up the stairs, east side of the room, there's two doors. On the west side of the room, there are three doors. The west's south door is the one that the secrets and traps wand detected something there. You've got this smoking, roiling cauldron in the middle of the room that obscures your vision in this room. We've got that big green skeleton gate against one wall and five doors upstairs. One we know is a trap. Maybe. maybe, maybe. maybe. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give Cranston one of my short swords. You place it across his lap and he weakly puts a hand on it and nods at you just in case. thank you thank you goat lee <laughs> i will... still got it yep. <laughs> <laughs> i swoon <laughs> he puts a he puts a hand against your cheek and you see a glimmer of of humanity within him still i think we're gonna find our way up to the balcony and check out the doors you head up the southwest stairs up to this top balcony that stretches across the west side of the room. You can see that now looking down that that main level is totally covered with this green smoke. You can barely see into where Cranston is anymore. As you come up to the first door, this is the one that your wand did ping off of. You see a wooden door carved into the front of it is a hexagon. Hey, we got those things. Oh, oh yeah. We have five shapes. Hell yeah. Figured it out. <laughs> Done. I thought more was the smart one. Now. Well, puzzle solved. He wasn't there for that. Uh, no. <laughs> well, let, let's take a quick peek at the other doors to confirm that suspicion. You look at each of the doors. Each of them have one of those shapes, those five shapes. Cool. Uh, triangle, square, pentagon, hexagon, o- octagon. And when you come past the green skeleton gate passing between the two balconies, you see this looming 12 foot high 10 foot wide door made of this glowing green stone 
has a belt of smooth stone across the face of it at a height of about four feet, set with five gold symbols in a row, a triangle, a square, a pentagon, a hexagon, an octagon. Each symbol is engraved on a recessed circular seal. Finally, these damn shapes come in handy. Does it look like they could come out? Oh, no, they're all recessed. Yeah, we have these skulls that we took from all five levels as we came down, and each one has... There's um, a, shape. a shape embedded yeah. in it. Who's, which hold, is, oh, who's holding those skulls? Like, I think Crate has them. Just like dangling off his belt or what? Yeah, with his other skulls. Okay. <laughs> just making sure. It's tough to sort through um, like a key ring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh no, this is my other octagon skull that I have. So those gold ones on the skeleton gate, are they they're smaller than the skulls that we have, it seems like? Or? They're about the right size, but they've got these stone, like that gold piece there that makes up the shape. It's like a, a plaque or a seal that you... Right. Can't get past. They got like a cap on them. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so we probably have to go through each door to yeah. unlock. All right, let's start with the triangle, and that literally seems like the first one. W- which one was trapped? The hexagon is the one where your wand okay. triggered off. Let's start with... Not that well, one. Well, no, that just points to the closest one, so that could mean that all of them are trapped. I so. mean, I have another charge. Let's f- find out. I mean, what does trapped really mean? Is there just danger beyond that door? Or it means that it... there's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. That's what it means. <laughs> or a secret. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or a secret. secret door. Yeah. But, anyways, I do want to see if it's just because I was the closest one to us. You move closer to another door, you mm-hmm. activate the wand again, and it points at the nearest door to you. It does. It's pointing at whatever's closest. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, they all got they all got some kind of secret trap. So, you guys decide to go to the triangular door first? Yeah. Okay. You make your way up to it. It's at the very north end of the room. Of course, it's the same sort of wooden door with the triangle carved into the face of it. And uh, there it is. (laughs) That's a door, all right. Yeah. We get the skull. We smush it into it. Nothing. Yeah, it's, well, it's just kind of like a carved triangle. You're you're like, put the skull (laughs) into it. You're like, sorry, who opened it? Um, I'm going to use the butt end of my staff and try to push it open. All right. So Lee takes the butt end of the staff of striking, pushes it up against the door, and it begins to slowly creak open. You go to look inside, and I'll tell you in two weeks. If you enjoyed the show and want to support what we do, number one way is to leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Furthermore, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Share our new episodes on social media. Visit the House of Bob merch website on Etsy for House of Bob zines, dice, trays, art, prints, and more. And by joining the House of Bob Discord server to hear all the new episodes three days early. Artwork for this episode was by Sean Makes of Instagram.com slash Sean Makes. Audio production was provided by Astronomic Audio, the 100% Canadian-owned and operated podcast editing service that makes your big ideas sound even bigger. Music was produced by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. The House of Bob podcast is made possible thanks to all of our fantastic Patreon supporters, including Jessica, Kieran Duffy, Mike from the Tales of the Glass Guarded World podcast, Sylvia Douglas, Luke Conroy, and Folt. If you'd like to support us, head over to Patreon.com slash The House of Bob. Cucumber? You want a cucumber?